So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at a really cool pen that I've been enjoying lately, and that is the Platinum 3776 Century. I picked it up in this color, it's called Chart Blue. It's named after a town in France that's famous for its cathedral. Uh, and it is a very cool blue, so I was happy to pick it up in this color, but it is available in black and red and some other colors. Uh, this is a, I would say kind of a mid-range Japanese fountain pen. It's from Platinum. Uh, it's a company I've talked about a whole lot because of their preppy line. Oh, I like these preppies a lot because they uh, write really nicely and they sell for $3. The 3776 Century is much higher end. Uh, this would retail in the U.S. from a U.S. seller for about 150 but if you buy it straight from Japan on eBay or Amazon, you can get it for about $70 or $80. And that's how I got it, straight from Japan, paid about $70 some odd dollars. I bought it in a broad nib. It's a 14K, so 14 karat gold. Uh, you can see at 585 but also 14K. They mean the same thing, the B is for broad. So it is a gold nib, and this is one of the cheaper pens that you can buy with a gold nib, assuming you do pay the, the $70. Once you're in the $150 range, you're usually looking for a gold nib. The basics of the pen, just to get some uh, you know, simple information out of the way, again, from Platinum, 3776 line. You can see that right there. In case there's any confusion, made in Japan, very cool. Gold plated parts, the body is resin, so just like a plastic translucent body. The pen is a cartridge converter, so it does not include the cartridge, sorry, it does not include the converter, but I believe they used to, so I'm using it with a cartridge. I happen to have a ton of these cartridges lying around because I bought so many of the Platinum Preppies, so it made sense for me to just stick with the cartridges. Converter sells for about six or seven dollars, so it's not particularly a uh, big lift, but uh, I believe the pens used to include them and now they don't seem to. Pen comes uh, really nicely equipped, nice platinum box, this gift case, and then it has just all your, your manual and official stuff in there. Comes with one single cartridge. Uh, one quick detail before I move along, the 3776, the 3776 line is named after how many meters tall Mount Fuji in Japan is. So that's a pretty cool little fact. Uh, looking around the pen, it's sort of a, I guess a cigar shape, I would call it, uh, but kind of a classic shape for a fountain pen. Has all this gold plated hardware, so a nice gold plated clip on the stiff side, but definitely functional. That gold-plated gold band, which is very nice. It says uh, Made in Japan. I believe, uh, I don't know if that's a logo or what, but then number 3776, very cool font there. And then P, platinum for the logo, and then platinum spelled out. Really nicely done. Uh, then uh, another gold band there, and just curved on both sides. It is a screw top. And then you see the gold nib. Again, really cool font on that 3776. Platinum logo. And then the 14K. Made in Japan. Plastic feed. And then, again, I bought it in broad. And we'll get into the sizing in a moment. Opening the pen up. Again, just the screw top. And then this is a metal hardware on the inside, which is nice to see. Once you're in the price range, it'd be better. To, you know, you want to see metal instead of all plastic. Components. One of the cool things about the pen that you cannot immediately tell is it has something called a slip and seal cap, and that's uh, just Platinum's mechanism for keeping the uh, cap sealed very tightly, and the pen should stay wet for about a year if it's just sealed up well. I haven't tested it, so I haven't had the pen a year, but I have had it for, uh, I don't know, maybe a few months at this point and I haven't had it go dry, which is really nice to see. I've been using it fairly frequently, but when I've gone away and come back a week later or something like that, it's been fine. So definitely, uh, it seems like that is relatively true. Uh, 
that's pretty much the basic details. I really dig the color. It is, I would say translucent, but the color is dark enough that it's not immediately clear that it is translucent, but here in the light, you could probably see through and make out the nib that you could definitely do it. And some of the hardware, you can't really see the fill level. So uh, maybe keep that in mind, but you can probably tell that it has a cartridge in there instead of the converter. Uh, as far as the nib size. So I went with the broad because I was looking for, not the nib size, obviously the nib is a good size. I'm not sure what size it is, a five or six or whatever, but it's on the, on the large side. And it has a nice flare out too, which I know a lot of people are looking for. And then the heart shaped breather hole right there. I'm not sure if it's immediately clear, but it is definitely shaped like a heart, which is a nice little perk or quirk, depending on how you feel about it. Uh, and again, I bought this nib in a broad and that's with platinum nibs, especially from, from what I understand, the 3776 line, they run really narrow. So this broad writes more like what I would expect from a European medium. Uh, it's also sold in a coarse, which is the largest size. And that would be the equivalent of a European double broad, but realistically it probably writes more like a European broad and it's also sold in an extra fine fine and all that, but those are very, very fine. And they're just for really small type of writing. As far as the fit and finish and the quality, I think the pen is, is really great under, if you call it a hundred, under a hundred dollars, just what I spent. In fact, under $75, uh, I, this is like probably my favorite fountain pen out there. Just the build quality, the body is really nice. The work with the resin is just great. Open and close is top notch. I'm just very happy with all the fit and finish. All the seams are great. It's very comfortable to write with. This section part is uh, very comfortable to hold. No sharp edges around here. Just, just really well done. The nib itself, it's an entry level 14 carat nib. So there's a little bit of flex, but really you can't feel the flex when writing. If you want to see it, you can push and get some flex, but it's not the pen strength. It's like reasonably smooth, not super smooth, not scratchy, but far from the smoothest nib. And it does not have the smoothest of a, say a Lamy 2000. So there's a trade off with the nib, but the build quality of the pen and the price are definitely quite good, probably even exceptional. And the value I would say is extremely high for the pen. Uh, I did this quick sample before just to save some time. Here's the platinum 3776 broad versus a Lamy medium. And I would say that's pretty close below that. You could see the Lamy steel in the broad. And now we're looking at a much wider pen uh, nib that's putting down a whole lot more ink. Then uh, one of the exceptional things about the 3776 century line is that it writes very well upside down. This was continuously writing upside down with no drying or scratching. And you get a really nice fine nib, probably even a little bit finer than the Lamy extra fine. And maybe Lamy is not an obvious comparison was not a Japanese company, but they're very accessible. I feel like a lot of people have Lamy nibs. So I like to use them just for comparison purposes. And there's that Lamy nib extra fine. You could see it's kind of running out of ink. It felt very scratchy. Uh, so it's not something you really want to write with upside down, but this broad in the platinum, you could keep going upside down. Uh, I think I spelled platinum wrong there, but you can keep going upside down for extended periods of time and it's not going to be a problem. Now we just do some quick writing. So this is the platinum century 3776 broad broad and i'm i'm using the uh platinum just the stock blue and this was just included with one of the preppy pens and here's that preppy nib so here's a $2 nib or, you know, $3 nib. 
versus a much fancier nib. You can see pretty big delta in the size and then obviously just steel instead of the gold. I would say the, the preppy is reasonably smooth though. It's not like you're getting a huge quality in smoothness when you upgrade to a much fancier nib. You're really just getting a little bit more smoothness and then a fair bit more flex if you want it. But the platinum, the, you know, the preppy has, I would say, almost no flex, whereas the uh, 3776 has limited flex, but you can see it when you're writing. You do have to feel it though, like, like really give it a push. And it's not really a nib I'm comfortable with getting too much line variation out of. You can get some, but not a whole lot. So noticeable, but you are fighting for it. And then upside down, it really writes nicely. It's not something I do a lot, but it's versatile if you are gonna head, go ahead and get by the broad. So this is the uh, 3776. You can see it just writes very little scratch. Nice work. Just scribbling there. So yeah, that is the Platinum 3776 Century in Chart Blue, uh, Chart Blue maybe. And I think this pen is a really exceptional value if you go ahead and import it from Japan. The question there is you have to make sure you're buying it from a reliable seller. So really watch out for Amazon. Be careful there, keep track of the shipping and all that. Uh, if you're going with eBay, really look for a reliable seller. I've had really excellent luck with eBay importing from Japan. You do have to wait a little while, but the savings you can get on a Japanese pen is really, is really gigantic. Uh, again, these are available from US retailers, but at $150, I would say this price, that's like overpriced, especially knowing you could buy this pen for $71, $72. And, uh, get some really exceptional value. So yeah, I really do like this pen. I would recommend it for an entry level gold pen. I think it looks super cool in the blue. Uh, the the Borgone or whatever the red is called is, is nice as well, but uh, I think it's tough to beat this blue and the value this pen brings to the table is really exceptional. So that's about it. Thanks for watching.